This is the first back to school season ever where I'm not going back to school. And surprisingly, it's not because I dropped out of school like every other YouTuber. It's because I graduated college last March. I graduated from UCLA Film School. I did a four year program in two and a half years and I graduated summa cum laude. And all while being only moderately depressed and wanting to drop out maybe like three to four times. So those are my qualifications. You know, I'm gonna be honest, I have not had like the perfect college experience. There were a lot of things that I think I could have done better in college. A lot of ways that I could have taken advantage of the fucking hundred thousand dollars that my education cost. Unfortunately, I don't have a time machine to go back and fix that, but I do have the power of the internet. <laughs> where I can give you guys who are still in college or about to go the advice that I wish I would have known. A huge thing that I wish I knew is that college is not like the movie, nor is it like the college your parents experienced in the 80s. I have no idea what magical land college was when my parents went, but they hyped it up to me for like the first 18 years of my life. College is not this magical friendship land, but there's that saying that happiness is reality minus expectations. And I think that was really what made me so sad my first year of college is that my expectations were up here and like reality was over here. And not that reality was actually that awful. It just didn't live up to my expectations. If you can let go of those expectations and really enjoy college for what it is, there are some good nuggets in there. I expected it to be much easier to make friends in college than it was in high school. And in fact, it was much harder, especially because UCLA is such a big school. You can lose that sense of community and kind of the natural way that people make friends, which is by seeing the same person over and over again, having to like these small interactions and then it builds into like a natural friendship. At UCLA, I never saw the same people more than once. The point that I circled, but never actually arrived at in traditional Ashley rambling style is that making friends takes work. Think of making friends the same way that you think about dating and that you need to set aside time to put yourself out there, to talk to strangers. You're gonna deal with some rejection, but you gotta get over it and keep looking. Don't be like a friendship starfish like I was when I was in college, just like laying there waiting for somebody to come befriend me. You have to put yourself out there and talk to people that you wouldn't normally, which I know is scary. I wish I hadn't gotten so discouraged early in my college career and kind of stopped really going out there and trying to make friends because one of the most valuable things that you can get out of college other than your education, obviously, is having people that you care about in your life. And your girl missed out on that a little bit, but mm, there's still time in adulthood. We'll see. Hustle culture is so overrated. <laughs> it's a little bit ironic that I'm saying this because I am not the best at managing my own schedule and knowing when I should relax. But do as I say, not as I do. Especially in competitive academic environments, a lot of people start bragging about how much work they're doing, how little sleep they're getting, how they're trying to juggle all of these things at once, how they're so stressed all the time, as if it's this badge of honor. I mean, I pulled all-nighters every week for the majority of my college career. And did that make me happier? No. Did that make me smarter and more successful and help me make better decisions when I was running on absolutely no sleep? Also, no. It took me like 21 years to learn this, but the time that you sleep and eat and rest is not up for grabs. That's not optional time that you can like portion away for some other activity. That is required time for you to take care of yourself and for you to exist as a human being. I still have a little bit of this like masochistic tendency where it feels good if I pull an all-nighter because I know that I couldn't possibly be working harder. The day after an all-nighter is almost the only time that I don't feel guilty because I know that I've like worked myself to the bone. So I'm still working on that one. A little brain there, Ashley. In the majority of fields, your GPA does not matter. This fucking blew my mind as somebody in high school where grades are pretty much all that matter. And I figured college was the exact same thing. Why are we going to these classes? Why are we getting graded on stuff if the grades don't really matter? Crazily enough, in a lot of fields, especially fields that aren't STEM, once you graduate college, you don't even have to put your GPA on your resume. All that matters is that you graduated, which honestly seems a little bit unfair to me because I'm like, what did I do all this work for? Obviously I can't speak for all career paths. So ask somebody who you know, who is in your same career, whether GPA is important before you start failing out of your classes, but at least in film and especially artistic pursuits, your skill set and your resume are the things that matter. If you're not going to grad school and you're applying to jobs right out of college, please, 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 intern somewhere or get some type of experience on your resume. The sad truth is that now that so many people get their college education, having a bachelor's is kind of the equivalent of having a high school degree in the 50s. Like it alone does not guarantee you a job at all. So please do yourself a favor and graduate with some internship experience on your resume because that and not the classes that you took is the main thing that's gonna propel you into a career. Going to school out of state or far away from your hometown 
makes you grow up so much faster. I was born and raised in suburban Maryland and I had never even been to LA until the day I went there for my interview for UCLA. Nobody from my high school or my community or my family lives in LA. So it was really a completely different world for me. I moved out to LA by myself very nonchalantly. I was like, eh, I don't really like my hometown anyway. So like, Peace out, motherfuckers. And then I got to LA and I realized that, holy shit, it is intimidating to be in a new city when you're 18 years old, surrounded by new people, trying to fend for yourself. When you're sick in your dorm and there is nobody to help you out, nobody to get you food, no home to go home to, it can be really hard, but I'm also grateful that it made me grow up so fast and learn how to fend for myself and be more independent. It is not hard to graduate early if you plan in advance. I knew when I was 18, even before I committed to UCLA, that I wanted to graduate in three years because I was just trying to yeet my way through the educational system and also not spend too many hundreds of thousands of dollars. So even before fall of my freshman year, I was planning with my counselor. I basically created a gigantic Excel spreadsheet and every single quarter of my years in college, I planned out which requirements I would fulfill, how many units they were. Certain classes are only offered certain times of year. So you have to take that into consideration. When you have it all spread out like that, it is surprisingly easy to go ahead and like schmooze some of your classes over a couple years earlier. Oh, I could put this class from senior year, junior year. I could take this sophomore GE freshman year. The basic principle is that every year in college, there is a range of units that you can take in a quarter or semester. At UCLA, that ranged from 12 units to 22 units. So you could take nearly double the amount of classes in a quarter and still be paying the same amount of tuition. So essentially my freshman year, I took the equivalent of my freshman and sophomore year's worth of classes. And then when I was a sophomore, I started taking upper div classes with the juniors. I do think this is a good strategy to really pack in as many classes as you can at the beginning of your college career, because as you get to upper division courses, they become more rare, they are offered less often, and they're more prone to schedule conflicts. So you wanna give yourself some wiggle room so that say when you are in your second year of college and this one class that's offered in the fall, you have to wait until your senior year fall to take it. You have some of that wiggle room because you maxed out on units your freshman year. Cause I worked so hard my freshman year, my sophomore year was actually pretty chill, a little bit too chill. There was one quarter where I was only taking two classes, which was like eight units. So I was technically part-time enrolled in college because there just weren't enough classes for me to take anymore. And then senior year rolled around. At this point, I was planning on staying for the entire year. So I would have graduated in three years, but I took another close look at my college requirements. And it turned out that I could compress all of my senior year classes into two out of three quarters. So that is why I graduated early in March. And that makes it total two years and two quarters. So obviously graduating in two and a half years is a little bit of an extreme example, but I think in most colleges, you are at least able to shave off one semester or one quarter if you plan your classes carefully enough. And that can be great to have as like a gap quarter. Maybe instead of paying a shit ton of money to study abroad, you could just travel for that quarter or you could have an internship. Or if you plan it properly and you put it in your senior year, you could just graduate early and start on your career path. Another thing that did really help me was having taken a lot of APs in high school, they didn't technically count towards my college units, but they did exempt me from the language requirement, which was a godsend. So if you guys are in high school right now, take your language AP exam. It saved me a year's worth of college classes, which probably would have caused me to graduate in three or four years instead of two and a half. Shop around for classes and choose your classes carefully. This took me a while to learn because I was so used to in high school, just getting like handed whatever class or whatever professor. And then I just suffer for the year. In college, you're paying for your education and the choice is up to you. Give yourself the time to shop around for classes. If your college has like a shopping period, please take advantage of that. UCLA doesn't because our quarter is literally 10 weeks long, but it's less intimidating to switch out of classes in the first week that you might think. You do have to do a little bit of catch up work, but it is completely worth it if you find the right class. This happened to me my sophomore year when there was a requirement to take an upper division class that wasn't in my major, which is surprisingly hard to find like an accessible upper div class when you're a fucking film major and you know nothing about other subjects. Originally, I signed up for a upper division philosophy class not having ever taken philosophy in my life before. And I was like, oh, it's easy. We're just gonna talk about life. <clears throat> I walk into the first lecture and the professor is like rattling off all of these Greek names. He's talking about like logic trees. 
I had no idea what the hell was going on. So I had to walk out within like 10 minutes because there was just no way that I was ready for that class. Then I switched to another class that was History of Anthropology, which I think if I had been a freshman in college, I would have continued taking that class, even though it was really boring to me and the professor was not exciting at all. But I finally switched into a third class, which was Urban Planning, which turned out to be one of my favorite classes that I took at UCLA. It was so incredibly interesting. And I'm so glad that I kept searching for a class that I liked and I didn't give up because you know, your time in college is limited and it's valuable and you shouldn't waste it taking classes that you don't care about. The professor, not the subject, makes the class. Seriously, you would be amazed how exciting a good professor can make an incredibly boring subject and how boring a bad professor can make even the most exciting subjects. Yes, if you can believe it, I've had professors so bad that they made talking about movies boring to me, a film student. It really is all about the professor. So they're like online services where you can look up professors. Although the reviews do tend to be biased, especially if the professor isn't like that easy of a professor, but they are very intelligent. They might get lower reviews. So take everything with a grain of salt. If you don't already get a planner, just do it. <laughs> get one of those hourly planners where you like write out the schedule of all of your classes, all of your shifts at work, when you're gonna study, when things are due. I honestly have no idea how people live without planners, especially in college when your life gets like increasingly hectic and irregular. It will save your ass. Freshman year of college is very casual. Let's just say that. It was a little bit hard to navigate, especially because I was a virgin when I entered college. It always seemed like the end game was sex. So I felt almost like unqualified to be at a party because that wasn't what I was looking for at the time. If I could go back in time, I would tell my freshman self that you don't have to be like down to have sex in order to enjoy parties or to flirt with guys or to do whatever the hell you want because those are your boundaries and people should respect them. Obviously that being said, casual sex can be fun. If you are into that, just get consent and be safe and don't get an STI. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that there's both pressure to have a lot of casual sex and then like traditional pressure to not have a lot of sex and it can be very confusing to navigate. I know it's easier said than done, but like literally whatever your choice is, whatever makes you more comfortable, whatever is true to you, do that shit and fuck what everybody else says. If you do choose to drink, but I just acknowledge it because it kind of is a reality of college, please, please be careful. Maybe I shouldn't say this on the internet, but I have ended up in the hospital blacked out because I took three shots in an empty stomach. I paid the emergency room $450 for having laid on a hospital bed for like two hours. Not my proudest moment by far, but this just goes to show like, even if you think that it's alcohol that you can handle, it's always good to err on the safer side. Nothing is more important than your health and well being, And it is also totally possible to have fun while you're sober. In high school, I think it's quite common that the default is that it is better to do a little bit of everything than to specialize in one thing, especially because you're so young, you really want to keep all of these possibilities open. And the terrifying thing about growing up and going to college is realizing that you have to let go of some of those possibilities. And that took a long time for me to let go of. I mean, honestly, it took my entire college education to let go of it. Even though I went to film school and knew I was basically committing to working somewhere in Hollywood, I couldn't let go of the possibility that I might wanna to go to grad school and transition into being, I don't know, like a lawyer or politician, like some other professional career, because film is a hard ass industry. So I was like, if I fail, I'm just gonna yeet out to grad school. So rather than really taking time to focus on my creative development as like a screenwriter and director, I spent so much time trying to get straight A's in all of my GEs that really were not relevant to what I wanted to do as a career. And for other students, that indecision ends up manifesting in being undecided for like two or three years, and then you have to take an extra couple years to graduate college or taking pre-med classes, even if you don't really wanna to go to med school, but you don't wanna let go of the possibility of going to med school. So then you keep taking those classes and then you end up a junior and you're like, oh, well, I took orgo, so I might as well just become a doctor even though I don't want to. Clearly I have friends who have been through that situation exactly. It can feel like choosing one thing to specialize in or one thing to prioritize in your life is letting go of all of the other possibilities. But in reality, being paralyzed and not making a choice is the real way that you lose all of the real possibilities in your life. Like it was even scary for me to really commit to YouTube because this career closes a lot of career possibilities, you know? Like, I'm never gonna be president of the United States or a Supreme Court justice like I wanted to be when I was a kid. But I had to let go of that possibility in order to actually make this possibility real, if that makes sense. This is a great little piece of advice that I think I actually saw on like a fucking Instagram quote, which is 
not the most reliable source of good life advice, but I like this one. And it is to romanticize your own life. With movies, and especially nowadays with social media, it is incredibly easy to romanticize other people's lives. Like, I went to the same school as Conan Gray, we both go to UCLA, but I watched his college vlogs and romanticized his experience of UCLA because it seemed so beautiful and pure and relaxing to me, even though I was experiencing in my real life the same thing. So basically what I'm saying here is try to think of your own life in the same way that you would view somebody else vlogging that or even a movie character going through it and be able to appreciate those little beautiful things that you have going for you. Like I pretty much just stayed inside my dorm in sweats and studied, but I think I really would have enjoyed the experience of putting on a cute outfit, getting all my colorful pens, going to a cafe, getting my little drink. I guess living this like movie-fied version of my own life I don't know, that sounds kind of superficial and it's not all about like being cute or spending money. I think it's about giving yourself the chance to experience your life with, with fresh eyes, I guess, and try to give it all it's worth. I don't know, just like appreciate my life the same way that I appreciate other people's. And lastly, the opportunity to learn is really something that I didn't cherish while I had the chance. It's hard to describe because my entire life I was in school and I'm assuming you guys have been in school for your entire life as well. So you don't know what it's like to not have your brain stimulated every single day thinking about bigger ideas, but oh boy, I miss it. It gave me a real sense of fulfillment and excitement in my life. Even if it was a little bit of a boring class, it made me think about stuff beyond myself and beyond my immediate career and my immediate tasks and that is something incredibly valuable. Alrighty, I have been talking for like three hours. So that is all the advice I'm going to leave with you. <laughs> Can you tell I've been talking for three hours? Thank you guys so much for watching and I wish you guys the best of luck in college. Know that I'm really proud of you for going out there, getting your education. School is hard, emotionally and academically. And you fucking got this girl. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Bye.